Hi everyone and welcome back to the Model Mama Show. I'm so excited to have this amazing mama here in studio with me today. Sarah Happ, you're incredible. Hi. And thanks. she is the founder and the CEO of Sarah Happ Inc., which is everything beauty product lip focused. It's lips. Like lips are the thing. And I want to talk about your like entrepreneurial story. Yeah. Because first of all, you guys, Sarah is CEO and founder of this amazing lip line, Sarah Hap Inc. And you know lips, girl. Look at your lips. They're insane. What I do for work. Thank you. It's, yes. All we do is lips. I, yes. So it's you. so cool. But I want to talk. And then also, I mean, first and foremost, she's on the show because she's also an incredible mama. I'm a mama. To Same a beautiful five-year-old, Julia. She yes. is just the light of your life. And she's everything. Yes. yes. I love it. Aren't they everything? They're everything. They're it's everything. so good. Yeah. It just gives such deeper meaning to life, right? hundred percent to everything you do. Everything you do goes back to your child yeah. now. Absolutely. Which we were talking before about how like our lives were so busy and packed and I know. work and all that. And now it's just everything takes on a different sort of tone. It does. You just mom. have to like structure everything a little differently. Yes. So that yes. you can do it all with more meaning. But I totally agree with you. Yes. That was so well said. Yes. But um, okay, let's start at the beginning because okay. I really want to talk about your entrepreneurial journey journey yeah. because I love your story. So Sarah and I share something in common, yeah. you guys. We both started our careers working in sports broadcasting, yeah. crazy. which is so random and crazy. Yeah. Um, you were working for ESPN mm -hmm. back on the East Coast in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And the birthplace of this like amazing company was you had really dry, chapped lips. Right. And you needed a solution. I wanted a scrub. Right. Oh so I was working at ESPN and you were at Fox in LA, uh -huh. right? So I was working at ESPN um, in the middle of Connecticut. And that's my background was like broadcast journalism at USC. It made a lot of sense. ESPN's right. a great company. Absolutely. But it wasn't my passion. Yeah. Like at all. Like mm -hmm. I would go home at night and I would read beauty editors tell me about, you know, <laughs> but I would sit in a bubble bath with like 19 different products. and. Yeah. Same. Soak away, and like every like all my colleagues were like watching Sports Center and seven games and streaming and all this stuff, and I was like, I this is not my love. So yeah. I was almost like inspired by how uninspired I was at work. Totally, you know, I was like, what yeah. inspires me is beauty. Yeah, that's what inspires me. So, I kept reading the same thing over and over again. I read beauty editors say, okay, I need to read this. To well, you're gonna read it still. To use a wet washcloth or a toothbrush to scrub your lips, and I was like. How is there not a scrub for that? I have a Clarisonic for my face. I have Sonicare for my teeth. I have hand foot, right. uh, you know, hand scrub, foot scrub when I get many petties, body scrubs, face scrubs, yeah. neck scrubs. Yeah. How is there not a scrub for my lips? So this was in th 2005, long time ago. Uh huh. And there were no results on Google. Like you couldn't buy it at Sephora. You couldn't buy it at Nordstrom. Yeah. And that's when I went to my kitchen and made I it myself. This, part. this is incredible. Yeah, awesome. I was like, I, I wanted it for me, basically. I was yeah. like, if there isn't a scrub for my lips, it better taste good, it should work like this, sugar should be the base, essential oils, like this. Like this all good for you ingredients. It should be yummy, yes, it should be yummy and it should be hydrating and mm -hmm. it was really, yeah, it was to solve the problem of chapped lips and I was just looking to hold, fill a hole in the market, basically. Uh -huh. Um, that makes so much sense. It's so funny, yeah. like thinking back. I'm. I don't even remember I what where I was in 2005. I don't <laughs> but I'm like, I don't. Yeah. yeah. Like, why didn't that exist? That's so didn't. crazy. It didn't. So I made it in my kitchen, and I brought it out here to a few. And I was obsessed. I had these like I made it all in mixing bowls with spatulas and Good Tupperware. I wore a hairnet um, <laughs> to keep everything super sterile. Nice. You know? I love that. Okay. And the first time I used my little concoction, I just scrubbed my lips and suddenly they were bright pink and suddenly all the dead skin was gone. And yeah. I was like, I had like full body chills. I was like, wait a minute, this is doing exactly what I want it to do. This is crazy. Like wow. other girls are going to want this. Yeah. Um, so I brought it out here to uh -huh. a few stores in LA. So I took a weekend from Connecticut, came out here, took it to like the Brentwood Country Mart and like this great store in Studio City, these little small boutiques. Was it like packaged kind of? Yeah, yeah. I took two weeks to make the formula in my okay. kitchen. That was two weeks to make six flavors of lip scrub um, with ingredients from like Whole Foods. Ooh, yummy. And like Stop and Shop, which yeah. is like the East Coast version of what do we have? Like, you know. Ralph's here. Okay, okay. So, um, so I had these like six lip scrubs, brought them out here, packaged it for like a long time. The packaging took a long time. Yeah, well, that's kind of everything in that's the beauty world. Yeah, yeah, it took a long Because I knew that the packaging had to be so good 
because no one had heard of a lip scrub. And like the packaging has to be like so good that people have to want to buy the box. Yes, that's very true. Or they're it's not so going smart that you eat, like that. almost without knowing what's inside. Yeah, you know, totally. So, um, so I made Love Scrub, brought it here to the country mart, and all these celebrities began buying it. And then I hired a publicist. Okay. Which is not really part of the story. People are like, and then you just got, you know, then it yeah. just happened. No, it didn't. Um, I hired a publicist in New York, and I was like, listen, I think I'm onto something. Like, uh -huh. let's get press. So we did like two days. They're called desk sides. Two days of beauty editor meetings in New York. Mm -hmm. And um, I was still working at ESPN full time, you know, because the percent, like the rate of these things going are, is so yeah, small. you just don't know. You don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But I did have a feeling that I was like onto something. So beauty editors all said the same thing. They were like, why didn't I think of this? Yeah. Like I've never, yeah. why am I writing scrub your lips with a toothbrush? That's crazy. And I've never seen anything like this. So in 2006, it was funny, it was sports. Mm -hmm. It was, um, the final four and I was like working a lot. It was, like, it was the final four of college basketball. And that weekend, People Magazine did a story on us naming Reese Witherspoon and Ashley and Jessica Simpson as like lovers of oh, the lip scrub. Waiting for you. Yeah, and like overnight then, my website So you were like, dashed. screw the final four, yeah. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I can't deal with the final four right now because I have thousands of orders. Like my yeah. website crashed, everything oh went goodness. down. It was a disaster, you wow. know? Um, yeah. But it was, you know, that was the beginning of the journey. It was a good year coming, um, but what had happened, man, did it happen. That's so crazy. Yeah. Oh, how amazing. Yeah. And then like two years later, you developed this little baby, yeah. which is also like, the, isn't this like the best seller? Best or are they seller. Tied? Best seller. Okay. So it's it's actually like the four time best seller. So the lip scrub built a hole in the market. That's how we got in, right? That's how we got in uh -huh. the stores and people. We got on people's radar. Um, did I say the lip scrub? That's fine. Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. So the lip slip though was three years in the making with okay. really smart chemists. Um, I went through like 200 iterations, which in like cosmetics, like it shouldn't take 200 iterations of anything. But you just wanted to get it right, yeah. I wanted it to be perfect. And I went to my chemist and I'm like, am I right in thinking that all lip products are dehydrating? Like, aren't we they all addicted are. to our lip balms? And she was like, oh yeah, 100%. Like 100, yeah, of course you are. And I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. Like, what if we just did the opposite? Like, what if we made a formula that actually did hydrate? And she was like, I'd get to use my chemistry degree. And I was like, game on, girlfriend, let's do this. <laughs> so we worked on it for years and years, like three years, and finally came up with this, the lip slip, which is what I'm wearing right now. Is that the most popular color? It's, it only comes in one color. Oh, it's just, well, it comes in, we have like lip slip glosses that are colored, but this is like the original. Oh, I love it. Comes in it. a pot too. So this was like, this is our hero. And I knew that like the lip scrub, yeah, we filled a hole in the market, so we won. But this, there so are won. millions, of, <laughs> there, are, there are millions <laughs> of glosses and balms. So yeah. if this wasn't awesome, it was gonna tank. Like we'd be like a boy band, like we'd be like a one hit wonder, you yeah. know? So you wanted to really develop your line? Yes. Yeah. So I, I had to be able to promise people like, if you use this, if you like exfoliate and if you hydrate every day, I can promise you, you won't have chapped lips. Like a hundred, I can't promise you anything else, but I can promise you that. Well, that's, that's true. a pretty good promise. I like it. Yeah, it's a big promise, but it's real. And I make it every day and we, that's what, that's what yeah. we've been doing for 13 well, years. You know, I'm like your yeah. perfect customer, by the way, because I'm such a lip gloss girl. Like, yeah. like my girlfriends, I remember in college were always like, laugh at me because like literally I would put on my moisturizer and then like lip gloss. Yeah. Like, like that was like your lip gloss first. Like it's so lip essential. Gloss first. <gasps> can I steal that and make yeah, it a t-shirt? Sure. Lip okay, can I wear it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, that's so good. But seriously, yeah. I'm like I've always been like a yeah. lipstick lip person. <laughs> so I'm like I'm so excited to have you on the show because I yeah. love your story and these Thanks. products are so incredible. I Thanks. can't wait to try I know we brought you goodies. Yeah, you can try I'm all so the goodies. lucky. All the goodies. This is amazing. Yeah. But so um, let's also just like talk about also why we're here about yeah. like motherhood yes. and like tying this all together because yes. you do it all so well and so gracefully. Ooh. And like I saw the cutest Instagram post on your. I was stalking her Instagram before you came on the show, and it was so cute because you just did this big partnership with Nordstrom. Yeah. 
And you got to bring your daughter. Oh, yeah. Event. Yes, I did. Was that so incredible? It was really sweet, yeah. Okay. So I do these like appearances at Nordstrom a few is, times are, a year. Is that, that's one of the retailers that you... Nordstrom's one of our really, they're one of our first partners and we love them and awesome. they're very good to us. And so I do these like, these talks at Nordstrom and I'd been doing them long before Julia was born. Aww. And this last, um, a few weeks ago, we were in my hometown of Chicago and she got to travel with me. And um, it's hard, you know, when you leave your baby, like when you leave Henry, yeah. he knows you're gone. Yeah, And it's really like the guilt is real. Mom yeah. guilt is real. We all feel like we're like missing yes. them. We are missing them, yes. you know? So I got to bring Julia and um, I walked out into the audience to like give away a lip scrub. And of course she like jumps on me like a monkey. Yeah. And I just scooped her up and I was like, okay, okay like come back on stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you don't put your baby down. I mean, yeah. she's five, she's not a baby, let's be clear. Oh, but still your baby. It's my baby. So yeah. I brought her back on stage and did the rest of the talk with her and oh. it was really sweet, but yeah, it, was it was good because she got to see what I do, Yeah, you know? And I try to bring her to our offices a lot so she can like, yes. she knows all of our teams. She knows everyone's job. And she's like your future CEO. <laughs> she is a shareholder. Ooh, she owns 10% of the company. What a good mama. She does. She's wow. a shareholder. Yeah. But okay, so let's talk specifically too about like yeah. what you said in that post because like I I don't even know if I can say it without crying because it oh, was like stop. so You're sweet. Because so you were talking about mom guilt and that's yeah. actually a topic that we've kind of touched on on the yeah. show. Yeah. But like everyone just to like acknowledges that it's real, but it's yeah. like, it's so real. And your advice to moms that like struggle with mom guilt and what yeah. you were saying your friend shared with you. Can yeah. you say that? Because it's so cute. Yeah. I mean, it's like the very reason I think it was in this post. I talk about mom guilt a lot and our mutual friends, like we, yeah, the mom we guilt, I think being able to be honest about it is really important. And, and we all try to do our jobs and show up. And um, we were talking about how I just got off a plane and like, you know, don't have normal makeup and lashes and but hair. But you still look gorgeous. But you know, you try to do stuff. You try to hit all your marks gracefully. But a lot of times I think none of us feel like we're doing it right. And you go right. to sleep at night worrying like you missed too much of Henry or you didn't yeah. hit your mark or you didn't do one thing at work really well. Yeah. And like this word of like balance, let's all be balanced. Yes. Well, we can't always be, you know? superhuman. You're not superhuman and it's okay. So I think my friend said the, the reason, um, the very fact that you're so worried about doing a good job for your kid and the very fact that you're, you have mom guilt about your child means you're probably doing a good job. Okay. Yeah. That is like totally what just like hit me. You're so cute. Like, I was like, uh -huh. that is such a good point. Yeah. And like, if you can kind of like reframe your thinking and yeah. think of it that way, yeah. it could it maybe make it a little bit more tolerable because it's like, it's so crazy how literally like every day when you're a mom and you're also working and juggling everything, you beat yourself up for, oh, I wish I could make that. Or I wish yes. I could do this or that or whatever. Yes. And it's such a like, that's such a negative cycle. Like you it just got to kind of like own what you're doing and you know do. that you're doing the best. But like you do just acknowledging that even having that awareness means that you're a good mom. Right. So let's coin the phrase that like having mom guilt actually mm -hmm. means that you're doing a good job. I think it does. And I you're think a good it mom. Does. We're concerned and we we're striving every yes. day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, we do our best. And and also I think it's important for our kids to know that we work, that's okay, you know? And for the longest time I tried to separate it. I tried to like be a stay at home mom, you know, in the morning and then like go to work while Julia napped. And yeah. my business wasn't doing what I needed it to do by doing that. And so, you know, ramping up what I really need to be doing ultimately everything we do actually is for our kids. Right. It really is. Because you're doing you know? it all for the next generation yes. and your family. Yes. And yeah. also I, I do love to work. You love what you do. Mm -hmm. It's okay to love it too. Yeah. It's okay. It's, it's a okay good thing. It's okay to love what you do and love being a mom. Yes. And like, that's what I think when I wanted to create this platform, yeah. I like, that was like my mission is yeah. to like is to spread that exact message yes. because I felt like nobody, not enough people were saying that. No. Like when I became a mom, I felt so guilty for still wanting to work right. and not feeling like fulfilled is kind of a, an intense word, but like not feeling totally fulfilled, yes. just being a stay at home mom. And yes. if you are totally fulfilled as a stay at home mom, that's incredible amazing. and amazing. Yes. And yes. like, I mean, that's the hardest job in the world. Hardest. 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 Hands down. 
Um, but if you're, you know, wanting to do more and take on more entrepreneurial things or yeah. just go back to work or whatever, right. like you have to just do what's best for you. But yeah. I just felt so guilty. Yes. And even like wanting to explore all those things. Yes. Well, because you came from a background where you worked so hard yeah. and you built this career and you yeah. built this whole, you know, world for yourself. And then yeah. to do a 180 and be a full-time mom, like it is, that's a different career path. So I think it's finding the balance of, okay, still fulfilling, like my creative brain needs to go to work. Like yeah. my brain needs to produce stuff and create stuff and you need to provide yeah. content. It's not Fox Sports anymore, it's this, yeah. but it fits your life. So right. it's okay to need that. And I have stay-at-home moms that are, you know, girlfriends that like that fulfills them more than anything. And they can't imagine, you know, going to an office. Yeah. And that's amazing too. That's their gift. Right. You know, yeah. so and I you just gotta own cheer. your journey. But what is your strategy for achieving balance? You say? Scheduling. That's a good time thing. management. Yeah. I need to time work. management. It's really like it's it's that struggle is real because it's like everything is is very sort of scheduled and you have to but I think the other thing is when I am with Julia, I'm truly with Julia. Like yeah. I don't have my phone with me. Like I'm not reachable through work. Like you can't talk That's to me. Right. Yeah. Like so my Julia time is Julia. And mm -hmm. if I'm on a plane, Julia can't reach me either, you know? So there's there's sort of a, a give and take. And also I think having people around you, like I'm lucky enough to have a team that supports me and supports my motherhood and supports my connection to Julia and my they protect my time too. That's great. Yeah. I love and that. Julia has like the greatest dad. And we have a nanny that we've had since she was three months old, which oh, it takes a village, you know. Yeah, it does. So I have a lot more support than maybe social media might say that I do. <laughs> you know, because it's yeah, like, yeah. you see a picture of Julie and I at soccer, and I'm like, not doing it by myself, like, you know. Right. Like, well, that's the thing. And people yeah. always ask me that, too. Like, I mean, even when I post an image of me and Henry from a shoot or something, it's like, yeah. how did you get that right. happen? I'm like, oh, <laughs> if you, like, even knew. Like, it, like it, there's a lot of moving parts. Yes, it's like, there are lots just, of moving parts. But that's just how it works, and it's like, I'm fine admitting that. And yeah. I love when people talk about that because I think it's like empowering for everybody yeah. to have that realization that like nobody has this perfect life on their own. You no. have to like help out from everybody. And even with help, it can still feel imperfect. Yeah. You know, like even with help, you still have like the mom guilt or you don't hit your mark every time. Yeah. I was late today. I didn't hit my mark. Anyway, you know, that's like okay too. you just do what you do. Yeah. And then, okay, so be, because we've been asking every amazing mom of this yes. funny question yes. on the show. What's your most memorable, funniest, craziest, like mom moment? Story? Okay, I love this. I love it when you ask this question, and I'm gonna give you an answer that's like, I hope it's not too gross. Oh, honey, but it's we've real. had poop, we've had the whole okay. thing. Okay, so our friend Pamela knows this answer. Um, <laughs> I think I texted it to her. So, uh, so Julia was asking where babies came from because oh I'm goodness. very open with her. Like, you know, we go to the bathroom yeah. together, and baths, and all the good stuff, and. So she asked where babies came from. And I was like, God, that didn't work. Oh, that's like too, good. like, that's nebulous. Right. Sure, right. sure. Well, I should say that. Yeah. So she said, no, like, literally, where do babies come from? And I was like, literally? And I told her they came from your body. How? Well, they come from your vagina. <laughs> and she goes, wait, how old is she, by the way? She's five. This was when oh, she was okay. four. Oh, my okay. gosh. Okay. But she's like a tiny little, when like 25 year old, right? So she goes, mama, <laughs> mama, God should have done that differently. No babies, way. She said, babies could, should come out of your butt because your butt is so much bigger. <laughs> I, like, I mean, come on, like, that's so yeah. true. Like that's okay. Like, There's already touche. room in there. Yeah, oh she, your butt is so much bigger. And I'm like, baby, that's a really good point. Like, okay. Um, so that was like a moment where I had to laugh out loud because like these kids think of this stuff. They go stuff deep. They say the stuff they say at ages that you don't expect it. Yeah, at I was all. Like, I didn't think this happened until you were like eleven. I thought this was like the the, the eleven yeah. year old conversation. That is kind of yeah. I don't know, <laughs> but like they know they know stuff. So wow. yeah, that was a. It was also humbling, you know. Yeah, that my butt like, was oh, big. Okay, yeah. Well, me, my son would probably think the same thing because I definitely have a booty. But I'm like, if only we could reinvent the wheel and make that happen. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's I more room. It. Yeah. Uh, I that was my I mom think, moment. I love that mom moment. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So good. But you're, like, quick on your toe. I feel like you handled that perfectly. Trying to handle stuff. 
Yeah, she's you good, know. you guys. You okay, can handle it. I wish we could have you on this show for like 10 more hours. Oh my God, you're so you're cute. so interesting and you're like so have cute. done so many cool things and have so much Thanks. great mom wisdom. Thanks. Like you guys have to follow Sarah on, well, you have like a company Instagram yeah. and then you have your personal Instagram. Yeah, so the company Instagram is, you know, it's all about lips. We're there to educate you about lips and we're there to walk you through okay. the, all the tips and tricks to smooth lips. Like, okay. so we make all the different products for your lips and you can do the basics, scrub and slip. You okay. can roll deep and you can do our mask and our painless bumper and all the good stuff. But then my personal Instagram, actually my friend Allie Webb of Dry Bar named it for me. Mm -hmm. She was like, I was like, well, Sarah Happ is taken because that's my company Instagram. Yeah. She's like, just be yourself. It's Sarah Happ yourself. I Sarah Happ herself. I love it. Yeah. Sarah so Hap that's herself. my real life. That's like the, that's the, uh, you know, you're going to see me with like my fixing my ponytail on Sarah Happ herself. <laughs> That's I love the real, it. real. So good. Yeah. But honestly, like we need to have you back just so you can do like walk us through a tutorial of like how to optimize all these. Oh, products. your lips are so good. Yeah, we could lip facial. Oh, you guys. Oh, I want a lip facial. Do a lip facial. See, and you can order yes. them online. It comes in her like cute lip. Oh, all this fun pink stuff. and lips. Pink That's what we do. everything. Pink I everything. like asked when I found out I was having a boy. I asked my girlfriend if I could still have a pink shower. That's yeah, like girly girl. I You're guess. so cute. She Did you do like, it? No, you oh. can't do that. And I was like, oh, okay. okay. So maybe I'll have a girl <laughs> later, but I'm with you with all the pink everything. I love it. But oh yes. my gosh, this was so this fun. This was so fun. Thank you for you. having me. This Thank is one of my faves. Thank you for being here yeah. and sharing all of your insight. Yes. And thanks for tuning in, you guys. This is Tara and Sarah signing off. Bye. from.